Hi, my name is Jonathan. I'm a dietitian that supports people who are struggling with binge eating and we've all got that feeling where we've bulk cooked many meals. We've bulk cooked all of our meals, breakfast, lunch and dinner probably for the whole week. And then you stick to that bulk made meal plan and then you, after just two days, you just think to yourself, well, might as well just have some takeaway. Might as well just have some chocolate. Might as well just have some crisps. What's happening? Why am I eating foods which I don't actually need and which I didn't plan for? So in this video, I'm gonna be talking about three things you can do to stop being binge eating on the foods you don't need. So number one is to actually practice saying your yeses to food cravings. I know it's very, very strange. You might be thinking, what? You might, I should be practicing saying no's. Actually, the more you say no to food cravings, whenever it pops up in your head, then the more it's actually gonna start niggling. It's gonna be start like taking over your mind. You're gonna start thinking about it much, much more. The reason why is because there's this thing in science called the forbidden fruit effect. So the forbidden fruit effect says in science that if you restrict yourself from a certain thing that you actually want, then you're going to actually think about it even, even more. You're gonna want it even more. Things that we want to have, which is right in front of us, and we want, and it's within our grasps that we restrict ourselves from, then we're going to want it even, even more. It's a forbidden fruit effect. So what I'm trying to say here is, if you have a craving, for example, for a packet of crisps, just a little packet of crisps, and then you restrict yourself, like, nah, I'm not that hungry, I'm gonna drink some water, I'm gonna eat some gum, then you're gonna feel full, and then you're gonna have another craving for crisps later on and then you try to hold back and then you do it again and again and again and then this could easily turn into a binge eating episode. You might be thinking, okay, but Jonathan, if I eat that chocolate bar or eat that packet of crisps, I'm gonna have five packets of crisps. So if that happens, I want you to check two things. Am I being full throughout the day? Am I being satisfied throughout the day? Because overeating, whenever you touch a piece of chocolate or touch a piece of crisps, oftentimes comes from you've restricted your calories too much or you're not really enjoying your meals. So make sure that you're eating regular meals try to finish your meals, try to be in 8 out of 10 full. So 10 out of 10 would be Christmas dinner full. You feel really, really sickly full and 0 out of 10 feels extremely, extremely hungry. You feel extremely ravenous. So make sure you're eating breakfast, lunch and dinner. Try to avoid going long periods without meals and then you'll find that whenever you have a craving for chocolates, you're not going to overeat and it's going to be easier for you to practice saying your yeses. Then you're going to be able to trust yourself around foods which people call junk foods. You're gonna have trust again with chocolates, crisps, develop a healthy relationship with food if you practice saying your yeses instead of no's. So there's this really interesting study to demonstrate the forbidden fruit effect where the scientists separated two kids. So there's one kid in one room and another kid in one room. So one kid in one room had in front of him a piece of candy. And then the scientist said, okay, you're not allowed to have the candy. Whatever you do, don't have the candy in front of you. And then just sit down, scientist, to just simply sit down and he did see the candy in front of him, but he was a bit confused why the candy was there. He didn't have any instructions or anything, he was just a bit confused. What's a piece of candy doing there? Was it leftovers or something? So what the scientist found is the other kid started to walk and look around at that piece of candy and start to examine it and eventually he started to eat the candy, even though he was told strictly not to eat the candy, while the other kid was simply just sitting down and was not actually tempted to check on the candy because he was just curious, but he didn't have that forbidden fruit effect in play. So practicing your yeses instead of practicing your noes towards foods you crave. So before I continue on, I'd like to introduce my Food Freedom Core series, which is seven videos, free, and it's an hour worth of content to help you develop mindful eating, which is really important. We often think mindful eating is a little bit heebie-jeebie, hippie kind of things, but if you think about it, mindful eating is the opposite of binge eating, because binge eating is mindless eating, but mindful eating is the opposite of binge eating. How to develop mindful eating practices, overcome emotional eating, be resistant to emotional eating and unhealthy coping mechanisms, and also to finally develop a healthy relationship around food. An hour worth of free, videos on how to overcome binge eating and emotional eating, I'll take it. So check that in the link in the description, which is free to sign up to and you'll get all of the videos straight to your inbox. So moving on to number two, to reduce thinking of or eating foods which you really don't need, is to avoid what's called mental restriction. So mental restriction is avoiding any satisfaction with your diet. So for example, I can be full but I won't be satisfied. I can eat meals which I don't really enjoy, but I know based on social media or wellness culture that probably 
things which will keep me full. Boiled chicken breast, quinoa, kale, broccoli. I really hate all of those kinds of foods, except chicken breast. I really hate boiled chicken breast. I like chicken breast anyway, but not boiled. Who would want to eat boiled chicken breast? Well, wellness culture tells you to eat it. Wellness culture also tells you to eat things which don't really keep you satisfied, but are full, such as volume eating, such as zucchini, spaghetti, cauliflower rice. Who, I don't know anyone in the world who's actually stuck to eating zucchini, spaghetti, zucchini pasta, and cauliflower rice, or another thing which I've heard from Instagram, which is really, really uh, weird, is cloud pizzas. So cloud pizzas is essentially heavily whisked egg whites and then they bake the egg whites and that's their pizza dough. Basically, it's egg white dough. I don't want to be one of those kinds of people who actually eats those kinds of things. If I want a pizza, I'm gonna have a pizza. If I want pasta, I'm gonna have the real pasta, not zucchini pasta or zucchini spaghetti, cauliflower rice, all those kinds of things. They're not satisfying. They're not really enjoyable. So they can keep you full, but you're not gonna be satisfied. So you could be full, but if you're not being satisfied, then you're gonna get that satisfaction from somewhere else. So you're gonna get crisps, you're gonna get takeaway, you're gonna get um, a large amount of pizzas. Because when we stick to the diet, whenever we stick to something that's not actually satisfying, we really, really try to hold on to it as long as possible until our tether absolutely snaps. Until we think to ourselves, that's it, I can't take it anymore. I'm gonna have pizza, I'm gonna have a massive pasta bowl, I'm gonna mas have tons of crisps, I'm gonna have tons of rice, I'm gonna have tons of takeaway. That's when we really start to have it massive binge eating episode. So to overcome mental restriction, basically make meals which you actually look forward to. Don't make meals which are you're quite neutral to. Have meals which are quite nutritious, but you can always make nutritious meals quite enjoyable. So an example of how I can turn this meal into something I actually quite enjoy is, for example, I could turn this boiled chicken, steamed broccoli, and cauliflower rice meal into garlic, teriyaki, honey, chicken breast slices with egg fried rice and steamed broccoli. That's quite nutritious, it's quite balanced, high in protein, but really important is something that I really, really enjoy. Something that's quite enjoyable because I want you to think, am I enjoying my meals? If I have any thoughts thoughts of, oh, how long do I have to stick to this diet? Or if I have any thoughts of, oh, it's not something I really look forward to, but I have to do it. Then you could be struggling with mental restriction, which could be later on secretly triggering or building up this urge to binge eat. And the third and final reason why you might be binge eating on foods you don't really need is because you have this all or nothing mindset. So what is the all or nothing mindset? The all or nothing mindset can present itself in many ways. So for example, one of the most common ways it can present itself is you're probably calling foods good and bad. You're adding morality to foods. So you're calling foods clean, dirty, good, bad, angelic, sinful, junk, clean, organic, People use organic as a health halo. So you're adding morality to foods. The reason why this can trigger binge eating episodes on foods you don't need is because whenever you add morality to foods and you eat a food which you consider bad, like cookies, those are bad foods, those are piggy foods, those are dirty foods, junk foods, then you're going to self-actualize it into yourself. You're gonna internalize this feeling of bad. And it might not seem like a big thing if you eat one cookie. Oh, it's not that much big of a deal, you might be saying. But if you think about it, if you eat, let's say, a cookie, at work. Oh, it's not that much a big deal. Yeah, and then you eat another thing. Okay, and then another thing and another thing which is bad and then another thing which is bad. So this happens very, very frequently. You might be thinking of something. Oh, that's another bad thought. Get it out of my head. So you're thinking about bad, bad, bad 24-7 and then, then the tether snaps. You start to have a binge eating episode. So what I want you to do is to stop calling foods good and bad. There is no good. There is no bad. If you think about it, all foods have their place. Some people might call jelly babies or jelly bears something that's a bad food that's really high in sugar. But to someone who has type 1 diabetes and this is their hypo treatment for really low blood sugars, it's life-saving. Orange juice, that could be bad because it's high in sugar. But to someone who has diabetes, that's life-saving treatment. Cakes, cookies, donuts, many people might call that bad. But to someone who's struggling with their loss of taste or metallic taste because they're taking their chemotherapy and they're really struggling with their weight and they're heavily catabolic which means they're breaking down muscle extremely quickly, then cake, cookies, and donuts could have their place to help prevent that unintentional weight loss from cancer, which could eventually be life-threatening if they lose too much weight, if they lose too much muscle mass. So there's always a place for all foods. All foods fit. Let's not have this good or bad mindset. So another way that the all-or-nothing mindset could also present itself is this thing called the Last Supper mindset. So you probably, if you're struggling with binge eating, you probably heavily struggle with this because I did this Last Supper mindset. So you're on a diet and then you have 
and something which you consider bad. Oh, I ruined my diet. Might as well just fail my diet right now. I might as well just restart on Monday. I'm gonna enjoy as much as possible so I can basically catapult myself to be strict with this diet. I'm gonna have McDonald's, I'm gonna have KFC, I'm gonna have Pizza Hut, I'm gonna have whatever I want free for all for the next two days for the weekend because Monday is gonna be the day that I'm actually gonna be really strict. So right now I'm gonna enjoy myself as much as possible. So I cleared out my mind. I'm not gonna be thinking about food. I'm gonna stick to this diet. I'm gonna grind as much as possible. And then you find yourself following the strict diet Monday, Tuesday, and then Wednesday. Oh, I'm quite bored of this right now. I think I deserve this diet break right now. So I'm just gonna have a one pizza. And then it turns into a binge eating episode. It's, you're either on and off track. You're having a cheat day. You're off track. You're on your strict diet. You're on track. So this is an all or nothing mindset. So you're either on a track, off track, all or nothing mindset. Being good, being bad. There's no such thing as on track, off track, all or nothing mindset. If you have a binge eating episode, start eating healthy meals, nourishing meals, which you completely enjoy with minimal restriction starting tomorrow. Just because you fell off the wagon doesn't mean you can start again tomorrow. There's a saying that I like to say that if you ever have this mindset of, okay, I'm gonna grit my teeth through this diet, you've basically failed already because diets shouldn't be something you grit your teeth through that you have to stick really, really hard to. You have to torture yourself to stick to. It can be enjoyable and you can actually still eat all the foods you love. All you have to do is to have a very, very minimal deficit and focus on high protein, and high fiber and you could still enjoy all the foods you love. If you want to learn how to reduce these binge eating episodes and remove all the triggers, I highly recommend that you check this video out on the main triggers but it's very very similar to this video and if you're constantly struggling with binge eating and you can't stop binge eating and all of your diets, whatever diet you're jumping on is always failing, I highly recommend that you check this video out also because you'll never succeed in any diets if you're constantly binge eating because binge eating is not a problem. You need to see it as a symptom that your body's crying out for food. You You've been dieting, restricting yourself from calories, restricting yourself from satisfaction for too long that your body's been now turned on to see whatever food it can get, it's gonna trigger a binge eating episode. So you need to put a pause on dieting. So if you really enjoyed this video, comment below if you found this really helpful and if there's any topics that you're really, really struggling with, with binge eating recovery. And also check my food freedom course in the link in the description. It's an hour long free course on how to overcome binge eating, emotional eating, and develop mindful eating so you can be resistant to binge eating episodes. Episodes. And if you want a one-to-one -one coaching call with me, check the link in the description. So I hope you enjoyed this video and if you found this really helpful, you'll also find this one really, really helpful. How to unlearn calorie counting. Check that out and I'll probably see you there. See ya and have a lovely day.